Hello everyone, this is Orange, and welcome to my abyss. I would like to start off a uh, new era for this channel with a uh, tour of my manga collection. So let's get started. If you hear any noises or talking in the background, I live in a house with my family. They have stuff to do. I'm sorry about that. So then let's get started. So starting off, we have the Legend of Zelda manga collection with uh, Link to the Past. We have Demaro Grass, Minish Cap, Majora's Mask, Four Swords, One and Two, and Ocarina of Time, as well as Oracle of Seasons and Ages. I just think the Legend of Zelda mangas are super cute. I don't know if I'm going to start collecting the Twilight Princess manga. That one's still ongoing, and I like the, uh, the short stories of these. I have my manga laid out in a very weird way in order to uh, be able to keep it in this small area. But how it's normally organized is I have series I have completed on this end, and series that are still ongoing on this end, and as well as American comics, but I'm not going to cover those in the video. I have American comics in that one too. So back to the collection after that. Behind this I have my beloved Sailor Moon as well as Sailor V and the short stories. I don't know if I'm going to go out and collect the uh, Eternal editions of the manga. Uh, we're gonna see if I ever decided to do that because I like these editions and the internal editions are just very pricey. <laughs> On this one right here we have The Earl and the Fairy, one of the earlier manga series that I've read so I have to have it here. Uh, Genkaku Picasso. I don't hear a lot of people talking about this one. I actually like it a whole bunch. It's a really unique uh, shonen series. Uh, Tokyo Mew Mew, my beloved, one of my first mangas. The, the anime got me back into anime. Got a big old soft spot. Excited for the reboot and also the Sequel series a la mode. I got Bobo Bobo Bobo, um, the singular issue, I believe. We have this as well as five other issues that came out. We don't have much Bobo Bobo in the West, which stinks because Bobo Bobo is good. I love the anime too, just just watch her fun. We got uh, Juana and the Dragon and Seven Kingdoms, a super cute uh, short story. I like it. I like how the characters look. I love the art. Uh, beneath that we got a demon diary, which I believe is technically a manhwa. Not everything on the shelf on the completed manga shelf is actually a manga, so it's like, eh, it fits. But Demon Diary, I think it's I think it's fun. I read it a lot in middle school and like the nostalgia stuck. It's like, oh I gotta keep on reading this. Underneath that we got Hide and Closer, which is another like super uh short, super good uh shonen series that I don't hear a lot of people talking about. I kind of I think of a lot of it as like a I think of a lot of it as like a Zotch Bell. But it's not really... I just want a Zotchbell manga to be re-released. Please, guys, just do it. Um, underneath that, we got Hollow Fields, the complete edition. You know, just a classic good one. Uh, right here, we got the entirety of Full Metal Alchemist. And I love Full Metal Alchemist so much that I'm actually planning on recollecting it through uh, the Full Metal editions. I don't really have anything against the omnibus format. It's just that I read the Full, I read full Metal Alchemist so much, it's like... I, I can't stick with the omnibuses. I need to get the, I need to get my beloved, <laughs> my beloved in full hardcover. And then I got the Four Coma, which is just good old comedy, good old alchemist. It's all good. And besides that, I have a Night School of Weird book. Not a, technically not a manga, but I put it here anyway. This is a series I grew up in. It's one of the series that got me um, really into like comic as medium. Moving next to it is Claudine. Claudine is a classic shoujo with um, a trans character, but it being a classic soldier with a trans character, it does really end that well for that said trans character. I also want to start collecting The Roses of Versailles, the manga for that one, which is also pretty pricey, by the same author too, I believe. So I'm going to start collecting that. It's just pretty pricey. Um, Iceland, which is really weird. It's like a short uh, like manga that I found um, like for sale at a store. It's, it's interesting. I like getting uh, weird stuff, so you're going to see a lot of just general weird stuff on my shelves. And next to that we have a Japanese edition of The Cat Returns. The Cat Returns is one of my favorite Ghibli movies and I saw this at a uh, at a convention that I go to and I'm like well I gotta pick it up. So just a Japanese edition of that. Moving on to this shelf I mostly call this the uh, the hardcover fun time shelf. So we have uh, firstly a Jojo's Bizarre Adventure art book. Uh, I don't really collect that many art books, but uh, it's JoJo's, and I saw it for like pretty cheap at like a convention, and I had to pick it up. We have the Super Mario Adventure manga, which is fun and cute. It's super short. Uh, Hipara or yeah, Hipira, which is uh, which is a weird. It's a uh, it's like a picture book <laughs> with an anime adaptation. I'm like, well, I gotta pick this up. We have one issue of Shonen Jump. Which, um, this is the first issue of Shonen Jump that I ever got. I don't- I usually get Shonen Jump through, like, a, 
like a pre-sold at retail or like a used at retail stores and this was the first one I ever got so I, uh, I wanted to keep it for sentimental reasons. A Drunken Dream, which is a weird thing in my collection because like right on it, it has a, for promotional use only, I got this at like a, at like a Goodwill or something, but it's a, it's a, it's a bunch of like really um, interesting like show, or shoujo stories. And I'm like, oh, why not keep it? It's cool. And then we got Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, My Beloved. I have part one completed, part two completed, and part four completed. I'm still collecting part three. Part three is my favorite Jojo's part, so it's like, uh, come on, I just want to get all the manga for that one. But it's Jojo's, it's good. Sorry, that was my finger in the camera. Sorry if that keeps on happening. Um, so above Jojo's, we um, have my Junji Ito collection, which I like collecting all the stuff that he has, like that's currently being released. So we got like Dissolving Classroom, Cat Diary, No Longer Human, Fragmented Stories, Venus in the Blind Spot, Shiver, Frankenstein Smash, Loveless or Love Sickness, Aramina, Gyo, Uzumaki, and Tomi. Just it's it's Junji Ito. If you like horror, you gotta you gotta read Junji Ito. He's like the horror guy. And uh, in Frontier. Uh, well, first we have uh, Drifting Classroom, the hardcover editions, which I am slowly collecting. There's only three of them, but I, I believe that they're very pricey, so like, these are... <laughs> these are always big big and steep purchases. Above him we have the uh, Satoshi Kon collection, A Tropic of the Sea, uh, Opus, and Seraphim, which he did the art for. Um, Satoshi Kon is one of my like all-time favorite anime directors. Uh, Tokyo Godfathers is my all-time favorite movie. And all this other stuff is like, interesting and good too. And he just does fantastic stuff, so I have to... I believe the only uh, published manga I need of his left was, um, is, uh, Dream Fossil? Which that was usually a bit more pricey, so I'm, like, waiting for a good opportunity for that. And behind that we have the, uh, the start of the Tezuka collection. I love the work of Asam Tezuka. I think it's all very, like, interesting. It's really interesting to just, like, go back to, like, the beginnings of, like, manga and anime in general and seeing his work. I love a lot of the uh, anime, ad anime adaptations of his work as well. So I want to see how much um, Tezuka stuff I can collect because a lot of it never released in America or was, like, very rare. We're going to see some of that a bit later because I have more Tezuka stuff. This is the completed shelf. So here we have the uh, Dororo, the Omnibus Edition Complete. Um, Dororo is really good. I'm just gonna say that a whole bunch is like, God, I love Dororo so much. Uh, both the classic and the remake, are, I think, are very good, very solid. I suggest watching both, because they don't ever get enough connection. attention. Uh, the Book of Human Insects, another interesting one. A lot of Tezuka stuff, it's all like, oh, it's super interesting. Because you get into, like, the edgy Tezuka with MW. It's like, oh boy, I am MW, which is another just interesting, like, more serious Tezuka work. And then we got Crime and Punishment, which I think is... It's really interesting because it's uh, funded with Kickstarter and I want to collect more Tezuka stuff so hopefully one day I'll have a shelf to just fill with Tezuka so I can just say, hey guys, guess what? I have it all. And underneath here we have the, uh, well these are American manga or just not American manga, American comics. Um, I'm probably going to do a separate video on all my American or just like not explicitly like uh, Japanese like style things because I because, like, Night School and Demon Diary aren't, but, like, you know, rules don't exist. Welcome to my world. So I'm going to talk about these in a later video, probably. And beside them, we got the Revolutionary Girl Utena box set. Uh, Revolutionary Girl Utena, the uh, show was really good. The manga is still pretty good, but the show is a whole lot more better. I think it was better into, like, themes and just general doing good stuff. Um, beneath here, we got Yokai Rental Shop, which is just a fun short stories, or it's not a short story, which is a fun short series that I, I like a lot. I like yokai stuff. I think it's cool. And then we've got, we got a Cutie Honey A Go Go and Normal Cutie Honey. It's Cutie Honey. It's classic. Uh, one of the earlier entries into the natural girl, like lexicon, is that a good word for it? But uh, it's more fan service leaning. So like, if you like Sailor Moon and Tokyo Mew Mew, I wouldn't also say you'd like Cutie Honey. <laughs> uh, we got underneath that, we got Devil Man, another which is also going to a guy with the same as Cutie Honey. Devil Man is another classic. Well, Devil Man Crybaby, very good. Underneath that we got my, my beloved Captain Harlock, just Space Pirates, and Base Battle Chef Yamoto, another good one. I love the classic collections, that's why I got all of them. I really want to get more, because I think it's just... I love seeing older manga like get published and having like the attention it deserves, because like a lot of that shaped, shaped manga, and it's like good to like read that. Beneath here we got a... We have Blackbird, which is a short series, which I like a whole bunch. I think the art is really pretty. And Pirates and Ninjas. I don't know why that's there, but it is. <laughs> that was a weird one. Sometimes I just go to like, uh, like a, 
<laughs> like a store, just pick up the weirdest stuff I can find and say like, oh yeah, this belongs in my collection. Beneath that we got a Cheese Sweet Home, which is one of like my comfort series. I love it so much. One of the earlier series that I've read. So very good. Um, beneath that we got Video Girl Eye, which is a, which is again a classic series. Um, I'm probably not, I'm not going to collect like any more of it. It's kind of like in the genres that I enjoy, but I like keeping because I think the art is pretty and I like the history. Uh, Alice in the Country of Hearts, followed by Alice in the Country of Clover and Nightmare. I used to have like so many Alice in the Country of books. It was like my, it was like my guilty pleasure. It was my thing. It's a, it's a reverse harem series, but it's Alice in Wonderland. Oh boy, baby. So I, I decided to just keep the main series in Nightmare because he was my favorite character in it. But just read it if you want to. When you think we got a Tessero, which is a short story collection, uh, the Ruby manga. I'm kind of a fan of Ruby. It's not like my favorite series, but I enjoy watching it. So it's like, eh, why not collect it? And then we got Itsubu, which is a horror manga. Not my favorite horror manga, but it's, I think, fun to have more horror manga on my shelf. I gotta start collecting more horror manga because like horror is my all-time favorite genre. Speaking of horror, here we got some good old Parasite. Parasite is a classic series. I'm so glad that it has like such a good printing. That's great. And then beneath that I have Neo Parasite F and M, which is um stories that kind of take place in the uh, Parasite universe, except with like their anthology series done by a bunch of different authors being in anthologies. They have like some stories hit, some stories miss, but like it's it's interesting to have. So let me move these out of the way uh, for one of the weirder ones in my collection is a uh, Twin Signal. Oh boy, this one is tight on the shelf. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get this one back up. But this is a Twin Signal and that's my hand. <laughs> This is a very weird series and I have no idea like where it came from. It's it's so interesting. I just like seeing the weirder stuff. I like found the, I, I was like so like, like enthralled with the series. Like I looked it up and I, I've only been able, to, it has like a, I think a two episode like OVA based off it. And I've only been able to find that once. This is, Twin Signal is wild, baby. And then uh, above that we got a Saint Tail, which is a classic magical girl series. Probably not going to collect any more of this. Just thought it was cute. And it's also the uh, old Tokyo Pop ones. I didn't grow up with these. I didn't really start collecting manga because I'm, I'm a 2000s baby. So like, I'm not used to like uh, this this fresh format right here. I didn't really start collecting manga until like maybe 2011-ish. And underneath that we have the um, Death Note All-in-One Edition. Death Note is a good classic series. I just thought it would be super funny to have the All-in-One Edition because... It's 12 books in one. This is also the worst smelling book I have. If, if you know if you know the, the book smell, this one's not good. <laughs> in terms of smell, very bad. In terms of being a good series, very good. And then beneath that we got Magic Knight Ray Earth, classic clamp. Love me some Magic Knight Ray Earth. Love me some girls fighting a vampire knight. Or no, sorry God, vampire game. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can tell, but uh, this was one of my first manga issues ever. And I left it in a pool bag, so it has so much water damage. I don't know if I'll ever collect any more Vampire Game. It has a super big, like, nostalgic, like, factor for me because it was, again, one of the most early, like, mangas that I decided to, like, read and, like, get myself. But, you know, it's his it's, it's, it's shoujo. Just got some good shoujo energy. Beneath that, we got a Goldfish, which is a, uh, a newer Tokyo Pop thing, I believe. I try not to collect, like, too much, like, newer Tokyo Pop stuff because, like, sometimes they're just, like, looking at, like, their older, like, business practices. It's, like, eh, but I kind of got this, like, before I knew about that. But, uh, Goldfish, I think, is pretty fun. The art is very pretty. Uh, I cannot say, pronounce, the, like, one third of its name, so Grand Ich Orchestra. Uh, an interesting shoujo. More, like, horror leading. I like that. And moving on to the actually ongoing shelf. So these are issues that are still either releasing or I don't have yet. So we got Girl from the Other Side, which I think one more issue of that is coming out. And it's it's very good. Very like goth it's a like a good old gothic fairy tale. A way of the house has end. Oh my beloved. <laughs> I've watched the anime for this like several times and it's just it's it's my comfort food. Underneath that, we got a Golden Kamui, which I've watched the anime for that one too as well. And I love the expressions. It's kind of like everything you want in a manga. Children of the Sea, which I'm hopefully going to finish soon because it's five volumes. The anime movie for this is so beautiful. And I, I read the uh, book series like before the anime movie actually came out, so I'm excited to see where that goes. Or I'm excited to see where the book series goes. And then we got the uh, Pokemon Adventures, another really nostalgic series for me. I'm collecting the Omnibus versions of this one. I believe we're getting ten. 
of these ones, and I'm wondering, are they gonna release the uh, other Pokemon adventures? Because I think that only covers up to at least like the uh, the Heart Gold Soul Silver arc. Um, above that, we got Mob Psycho 100 and Mob Psycho 100 Reagan. Love me some Mob Psycho, one of my favorite series of all time. So hyped for more to be released, it's just like Dark Horse or released slowly. Beneath that, we got Claymore. I'm slowly collecting Claymore. I love Claymore. Love me some, uh, some Woman with Swords. Speaking of Woman with Swords, we got uh, Princess Knight and its sequel, Swin Knight. And Princess Knight is a series that I want to collect, but for some reason, the second issue of Princess Knight is out of print at like $200. So I'm probably not going to get that anytime soon unless like extreme luck. I even looked at this one and this one's like $90. Like, I don't know like what happened. Like, it's not like vertical, like not... I don't know vertical. Why did you stop printing Princess Knight? What's going on? Because like, uh, because the Book of Human Insects is like printed by vertical and that one's like normal price and also Tezuka. So why not Princess Knight? <laughs> it's like one of his classics, but... If you can, like, ever get your hands on it, or even watching the anime, it's classic shoujo, inspired, like, a lot of, like, so shoujo tropes, as well as, um, like, magical girl things. Very good, very great. Speaking of very good, very great, we got Doro Hedero, my beloved. I just love the art style. Slowly collecting this one. It's just so good, it's so grungy. I love it. But beneath that, we got Land of the Lustrous. Oh, boy. Another very good series. I love collecting it. The art is super unique. It's super pretty and super flowy. Just love it so much, then. Oh. A Jin, my beloved. I love this series so much. It's probably like one of my favorite manga series. Like, at the moment, I love just the, I love the progression of the artwork, I love the story. Like, it's weird. Normally, I'm not like the world's biggest action person, and like this entire story has like been one action sequence since like volume 12. But like, I love it so much, and the next volume, or the last volume is coming out soon, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss you so much. Uh, we got Die Dark, another cute Hashida thing. Same from Doro Hedero. This one's going good so far. I'm so excited. I can't wait for more. Um, Berserk, very classic. Um, I'm really upset with the recent news that um, the author Kentaro Mira passed away. His um, work is fantastic. He really like changed. He really did like a lot of great work, and he will be missed. And I will continue collecting the series because I have so many friends who just love Berserk and I love Berserk as well. And his work really left an impact on like, on everyone. And then besides that, I have Tezuka's uh, most classic, who's well known, Astro Boy, my beloved. I love Astro Boy. I'm going to keep on saying that. Astro Boy is so good. I've seen like, I've watched all the different anime adaptations of it. It's so, it's so fantastic. Watch the 2003 series if you like want a good taste of that Astro Boy goodness. But, uh, but yeah, this is another series that's, like, surprisingly hard to find. It's published by Dark Horse. And, uh, come on, reprint, reprint Astro Boy, please. I just, we need, we need to have the classics in the public eye. Otherwise, what are we gonna do? <laughs> and then beneath that, oh, yeah, more Tezuka stuff. Who do you think I am? Uh, we got The Legend of Doro and Dororo and Hakimaru, which is a, like, pseudo, which is, like, a remake of normal Dororo. Of course, by different artists, because Tezuka no longer with us. <laughs> but uh, it's a very... it's all right so far. I don't think uh, it doesn't have that classic charm, but it's like still Dororo. Uh, Soul Eater, slowly collecting that one. You don't need me to say anything about Soul Eater. It's Soul Eater's good. Uh, Tagami Bachi, nostalgic series for me, slowly collecting this one. I don't collect... I don't really collect too many Shonen Jump series, if like you can tell anything from the shelf. A lot of them like don't... it's like I like them, but it's like... Eh. That's like the worst way to describe something, but I don't collect too many Shonen Jump series. I like the... but Tagami Bachi is beautiful. Uh, we got Dream Saga and Plus Anima, which are older, um, like, uh, Tokyo Pop, like, titles that I grew up with. Collecting these ones too. These ones are, like, out of print, so they're, like, harder to find. So I think I actually uh, recently ordered some of like the uh, like used Dream Saga volumes, but Plus Anima is going to be the one I'm collecting more. Plus Anima is one of my personal favorite series. Beneath that we got Gone, which for some reason like at the beginning of the at like the beginning of last year like it was easy to find, but suddenly like the volumes are going for like the West spent fifty dollars on a Gone volume, and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to wait to find you used like the in in like a corner, but, like. Gone is uh, super cute. There's no dialogue in the series. It's just beautiful, lush artwork about Bill Dinosaur trying his best. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! I love Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! Trash. Yu-Gi-Oh! is my trash. I love it so much. Um, so slowly collecting this one as well. Pandora Hearts, another one of my personal favorite series. Slowly collecting this one. Uh, we got 
uh, The Birth of Katara, which is actually um, part of Gegege no Katara or Spooky Katara. It's an older series. Surprise. Orange likes older series. <laughs> but I'm, these, I believe this is um, six volumes. They don't have numbers on them, just titles. But uh, if you want like good classic spooky yokai goodness, um, read this or just watch any of the uh, series. I really suggest the uh, 2018 series. That one's really good. Uh, Blackjack, which is another classic Tezuka one. Slowly collecting this one as well. Love Blackjack. It's I love the uh, 2003 or 2006 anime, the most recent anime of, no, not Young Blackjack, like the one, uh, <laughs> I just love Blackjack. I think it's super fun and like Blackjack, he's, he's, he's just a very interesting character. Uh, to Your Eternity, loving the anime adaptation of this so far. Finally, I can be all like, aha, I know what happens next. So, yep, it's just good. It's just good quality art. I believe the same author of this one also did A Silent Voice. I actually haven't read A Silent Voice yet because uh, bullying stories uh, really get to me sometimes and I want to get into the right headspace for that one. <laughs> but I don't need to be in the right headspace for Monster. Another, my beloved, I love you so much, Monster. I'll do anything for you. One of my personal favorite series, slowly collecting it. Love the anime. Then in Yuasha, another super nostalgic series that I'm collecting. Uh, slowly but surely, hopefully I'll be able to get all of that into my uh, collection someday. But it's very beefy. Uh, and then, I guess the last ones we're looking at, because we're not looking at my American stuff right now. Or American, because some of this is Italian, <laughs> and some of this is French. Um, but uh, we got uh, my beloved Cirque de Freak. I was so happy to hear that this series was getting um, a re-release in omnibus format. This is like one of my... Like the the books, the uh, this is actually based off an American book series, and it's one of like my all time. Let me get that out for you. It's like one of my all time uh, favorite like franchises in general. One of these days, I have to talk about this like series like at length because I have so much random knowledge on that. But I'm so hyped that it's getting re released, so I don't have to spend like sixty dollars on like one book. <laughs> but it's getting re released in the omnibus format. I think there's going to be um six of these because it's a twelve book series. So um I'm so hyped. I'm so glad. Uh, please, like, read the series or, um, read the book series, which I do have, like, on my normal bookshelf. Or maybe watch the movie, but, like, the movie is not, um, that loyal to the books. I can talk about the movie for hours. And moving on to something else is, um, some of the, um, things like that are manga adjacent or I have, like, in weird places. So on here I have a Sailor Jupiter character guide that I found, like, randomly at a store. So it's like, why not put this on my put this on my shelf? Sailor Jupiter is my favorite Sailor Guardian. She is my beloved, and I also have uh, two issues of um the Sailor Moon, uh, I guess, uh, book series from when it was like being published in the '90s. I haven't read these yet, but uh maybe eventually. Uh, I don't know if this counts, but um, so it's a Pokemon like pocket comic thing for Free Comic Day. You know, just cute Pokemon stuff. I love Pokemon, one of my favorite franchises of all time. And then speaking of Pokemon, um, I'm so sorry for the awful quality these are in. I got these from hand-me-downs from my brother. So these things are older than me. <laughs> Probably. But these are, um, like, really short, like, publishings of the, um, Pokemon manga that was, uh, by, um, by Ono. These are the, uh, this is, like, the super interesting one that had, like, a lot of, like, a censored art because I believe the original author was, like, a hentai author before doing this. And uh, this is, like, the series where, um, <laughs> where it has the picture of Jessie and James getting, like, a kid. This one, this one's, a uh, wild. This one's a wild Pokemon manga. I definitely suggest the Pokemon Adventures more, but if you, like, want the, the really weird Pokemon stuff, highly suggest. The art is also pretty, too, like, despite the sometimes weird ways the ladies are drawn. <laughs> Uh, we have the Attack on Titan Anthology, which I got from Free Comic Book Day. I think this might be a, like, an excerpt from a longer series. I'm not too sure. I don't really collect Attack on Titan. Like, it's a series that, it does really interest me. I, I can, like, acknowledge that it's, like, super good. But, you know, it's just never really called out to me. But, with, like, one of my friends gave the series to me. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a read. And it's just, like, Attack on Titan Anthology. Um, here we got two books from a Studio Ghibli Museum. Uh... I got, I also got these from a friend, so these are interesting to have, I think. Just a bunch of just general Studio Ghibli stuff. Super, super cute, super charming. Who doesn't love it? <laughs> Alright, so... So being a uh, 2000s kid, I really wanted to draw manga when I was younger. So I used to have a lot of, like, how to draw manga books, I think specifically by uh, Chris Hart. And, like, it's... I don't really draw manga anymore. If you, like, check out, like, my Twitter or Tumblr, like, uh... 
I don't really do much of a manga style anymore. I'm influenced by it, but it's like not something I'm trying to go for. But I keep this around because it's like way more than just like draw a circle, not draw two eyes, but it like goes into a bunch of uh like different like histor historical like things. Like it's like uh oh, so you want to write um a main character, and then it's like which class do you want your character to be? Like do you want your character to be like a knight or a cook? And then like they list so much like in interesting information. The series has like helped me, or this like book has helped me like through many like different writing things. So like. I don't know, I think it's, like, interesting. Japanese fantasy manga. And then, of course, at the end, it's, um, Twisted Visions. I keep this book in my room, actually, because, uh, I need Junji Ito to be watching over me 24-7. Otherwise, like, why not? <laughs> What's the point? So it's just a, just a good old art book of his. Just, just beautiful art. You may not think it's beautiful, but I do. I love me some Junji Ito. So, so yeah. That is my entire manga collection. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you uh, stick around on this channel because I'm planning on doing a bunch of like different stuff. And eventually I'll also cover my American manga. Uh, thank you very much and have a lovely night.